Yes. Whoa! Whoa! Your right now. I'm Whoa! the glory. It's the presence. It's what he wants you to experience. It's the difference maker, man. It's the difference maker. It's the difference maker. You are called to carry the glory. You are called to bring forth the presence, man. You are called for it. But we forget we let life start speaking louder than truth, right? We let situation and circumstance and people matter more than our mission, you know? Oh, I'm sorry. I want to welcome everybody online to Wildfires Ablaze. We're in San Antonio, Texas. Oh, I'm telling you, God is really moving. If you are in the San Antonio area, you are, you are being robbed. You are missing out on what God's doing. When you come into the presence, into the atmosphere, there's an impartation release. It saturates into your spirit where you can be more like him, where you can't get it online, man. You know, the church got to quit justifying sin, man. We got to quit justifying. That's okay. He's not killing people no more, so, you know. He's just doing this or that. She's just doing this or that. No, because sin separates us from God. It don't matter what it is, man. Yeah. It separates us from being entrusted by him and from being blessed consistently and constantly, man. Yeah. It steals peace from, yeah. the, from you, man. It steals peace. I mean, you ever see that commercial for the credit card? Guy taking his kid to the baseball game, buys him a baseball hat, 20 bucks, buys him a hot dog and a Coke, probably 30 bucks. <laughs> but then it says this, spending time together, priceless. Priceless. You know, we're too busy focusing on succeeding in stuff and in things that are not his will. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be the best whatever. I'm going to do this, this, and that. And you never even asked him if you should do this, this, or that. And he's been talking to me about people hiding in the open. Oh. And he says, my church hides in the open. Yeah, yeah. They have rebellious hearts and they want to pick and choose what parts of leadership to listen to, what parts of the word to obey. 
And he says, I'm rebranding the church. And I heard the word Lana released this morning. That's a rebranding the church word. The word I prophesied. It's a rebranding the church word, man. See, people aren't running to the church because they're looking at you and me. That's right. I'm being honest. I see Christians act worse when pressure comes on them than people in the world. They panic, they flip out, they get... I don't know, man. I don't understand it. I, I just don't understand because we all got the same Holy Ghost. It really comes in one size, man. And that's gigantic, enormous. I don't know how you want to say it, man. It really comes in one size. I'm talking we have the same spirit that rose two people from the dead through this house this year. That rose Jesus from the dead. That's been turning dead things and making them alive for Thousands of years, man. I'm telling you, you can have as much God as you want. That's right. Come on. Come on. The prophet had so much of God that he was already dead. A soldier got killed and fell on his bones. His bones were saturated with so much of God. There was no prayer. He fell on the bones and he came back to life. That's it. That's it. But that's what God's been talking to me, man. Today's not so-called pastoral message. It's an apostolic prophetic word, man. Because we got to start doing something, really, man. And the Lord's been showing me that the church is hopeless, man. They feel stuck. And their thought processes and their attitudes and what they're they, they're going through. Yeah. Like nothing's ever gonna change, it's just getting worse. Yeah. It's just yeah. getting worse. That's how the church is thinking sometimes, man. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's the farthest thing from truth. It's the farthest thing from truth. It's the farthest thing from truth, man. Amy, the Spirit of the Lord says this to you. Do not overthink, for I am with you. Oh, for I tell you, my daughter, that this too shall pass. These thinking, these thought processes, these ways that seem like they are forever, are not forever, saith the Lord. For I am working on your behalf because I am in love with you, my daughter. Because you are precious and special and important. And these are your stretching days. These are your character building times. And you shall see it in the future when I rest upon you, my daughter. You shall look back at these days and see that I was working in the midst of it when you believed you weren't sure about it, saith the Lord. For I am a daddy who loves you. I love you, Amy, saith the Lord. Wow. You know, he's here to rebrand. People ain't running to the church because of the church. Yeah. But he's bringing back hope. Ain't that what he said this morning? Yeah. <clears throat> he's bringing back a mentality where... Even when it's tough, we won't give up. That's what he's doing. I don't know. I know when I was in the world, I hung with nuts like me, man. And anyone I saw is weak, I'm getting you. I promise you, I'm getting you. You know? But we have the wrong perception that we think we can get saved. All of a sudden, God's going to make everything all right. He says, no. Jesus did not pay the price for you to go to heaven one day. He paid the price so that heaven could come back in you today. So you could pick up where he left off. So you would know that you're just like him, man. 
Matthew 18, 11, Jesus came to restore that which was lost. Man, what was lost? Our identity. We were orphans, man. Now we're accepted sons and daughters, man, going through the process. What else was lost? We had no intimacy with our daddy. Jesus fixed that through the finished works of the cross. And the blood and the water that came upon the earth. Through Holy Spirit. But, you know, another thing people don't talk about that was lost was destiny, man. Because we're made in his image, we can do a lot of things in our own strength or refuse to do things in our own strength. Yeah. But he restored a kingdom destiny within men and women once again, man. Where we would make Jesus known and famous through our lives, man. He would. And I'm not saying there ain't going to be an opportunity to tick you off every day. Because there will. You just don't have to take it. Yeah. And that's where the rebranding is going to start. With us not taking these opportunities, man. So you've got to understand, we are called to represent, to demonstrate with accuracy the kingdom of heaven on the earth, man. But if we're so caught up in our own little worlds, about our own little families, about our own little financial situation, and we're refusing because we still have rebellious hearts to do the will of God, then nothing's going to change, man. When you were in the world and somebody tried to take your last hit, I, t I bet you would say something. When you were in the world and it was 2.30 in the morning and there was one beer left in the fridge, I bet you you were going for that last beer, man. When you were in the world and somebody didn't speak right or act right, I'm sure you didn't say, oh, yeah, keep talking crazy to me. No, you said something back. Yeah. Why do we come into the kingdom and get passive? Matthew eleven twelve 12 says the kingdom suffers violence. Yeah. And the violent take it, man. Yeah. We got to start taking some stuff from the enemy, man. Yes. And that involves discipline and structure in our lives, man. Through prayer and worship and reading the word. Through positioning yourself where you're supposed to be, man. Not everybody's called to this ministry. They're not. Not everybody is. Because where you're called to has to do with you directly doing the will of God. Because there's a vision. There's a vision, man. There's a vision. Some people feel comfortable, some don't. Some people don't, people feel uncomfortable for the wrong reasons, but right? For the wrong reasons. Because we know what's in our hearts. Yes. We know how we're living on a daily basis. We know how we're manipulators and controllers. We know how we're lazy and self centered. We know how we get angry if we hear a loud noise out in front of the house, man, that we have anger issues. We know there's something not right, but that has nothing to do with it. The root issue of all of this is we don't know our identity in him, man. We don't understand process. We don't understand that... Our focus is to be on representing and demonstrating the kingdom. And that's what the church, why it needs to be rebranded. Why it needs to be regenerating a new vision, man. Because they're not trying to bring the kingdom. They're not trying to demonstrate the kingdom, man. We're trying to demonstrate smoke machines. Feel good. I was talking to this this pastor man and you know what he told me he said we're getting everybody we're not being religious no more we're putting on worldly music before we start the services i'm like okay knock your socks off that's what holy spirit that's the holy spirit told you well not you don't have to hear from god on everything i said i understand that if you're mature 
You know? I mean, we think we're smarter than the Holy Spirit is what I'm trying to say. We think we can out-hustle everybody. I'm not telling you you can't listen to temptation. I'm not saying that, man. You know? I'm just saying we do things. It didn't work out for this guy, bottom line. But we do things because they seem right to us, man. Because they make sense to us. But we're not worried about making sense to us. We're worried about people pleasing. We're worried about less pressure. We're worried about feeling good. Yeah. That's what we're worried about. We're worried about manipulating everybody so I don't have to have a full-time job. Whoa. We're worried about manipulating everybody through our fits of anger so you, we can get what we want. We worry about, that's the brand on the church. The Bible's real clear. If you don't have yourself in order, don't think you can do anything for the house of God. I didn't say it. He said it. I'm just telling you. But because we have places of insecurity, I want to do this, I want to do that. With a wiffle ball bat, so I'm on the run, the cops got my gun. You know, we want to do all these things, man. You know? But we got to get in order first, man. We got to get in order first. If I'm still spitting on people, I'm not ready to preach yet, man. You can throw stuff at him, just don't spit on him all, man. You know, you know your heart. Yeah. And the Bible is real clear. A person's heart is wicked above all things. Yeah. You don't even want to know what he compares it to. Because yeah. I'm not going there. But we must rebrand the church, man. Yeah. We must manifest and demonstrate yeah. what heaven looks like on the earth, man. Yeah. Is there... Anger in heaven? No. The why is it in you? Well, okay. Is there addiction in heaven? No. The why is it in you? Is there frustration and depression? And, no, there's none of that stuff. Is there laziness? Is there disobedience? No. We got to manifest, man. We got to represent, man. See, when you rebrand something, there's, it's going to come through impact and transformation, man. That's how it's going to come, man. If what your life is really kingdom focused, you're impacting others. And others are getting transformed because they encounter you. That determines the strength of a brand. And we're rebranding this church. Is the glory here in wildfires ablaze? Yeah. So you should, it should be yours, right? Yeah. So everywhere you go, is there healings here? Is there love here? Yeah. Is there good food? Glory be to God and Darlene? Yes, yeah. man. Is there, you know, everything here you should be able to give away. But God will not give it to you. If you have a hidden agenda, ulterior motive of your heart. If you are willfully disobedient, he cannot trust you to represent him with an accuracy and a provision. That's good. That's true. We got to rebrand, man. Some of us got to rebrand and start with ourselves, right? Some of us got to rebrand and start with, our, with ourselves the way we do things, man. I gotta rebrand my mind. It's not kingdom focused. Who am I impacting? What type of transformation am I seeing by people who encounter me? Honestly, man. Some people have been Christians 40 years. Praise God, nobody in this house. We're a roughneck crew. <laughs> We are, man. We're a roughneck crew. Other than Robert, but that's why he's the president. 
But we're a roughneck crew, man. Everybody go to Luke chapter 17, 12 through 19. And I'm going to tell you, Jesus had to go through this branding process. I'm going to show you right here. Luke 17, verses 12 through 19. <clears throat> then as Jesus entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers who stood afar off. You're going to go places. They're going to know you're a Christian. They're going to know. But they're going to be checking you out, man, from afar off, man. They heard good stuff about this Jesus cat. And you claim to live through him and that he's in you? Okay. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, have mercy on us. Now we heard he's a merciful God, man. We heard that. So when Jesus saw them, he said to them, <clears throat> go show yourselves to the priests. Go show yourself to the religious folks, man. Go show yourself to people who think they got it together and know something, man. Go show yourself. Because you're lepers. You're hopeless. You guys walking around, you walk too fast, you lose a toe. You got body parts falling off, man. So go show yourself to religious nuts. And so it was that as they went, <clears throat> so as they obeyed, as they went, he said, go. They were on their way in the midst of the process. They got cleansed. How are you and I going to get cleansed to re be rebranded and be the rebrand of the body of Christ? Through the process, we're going to get cleansed, man. The king didn't marry Esther overnight. He put her through months of a beautification process, man. But when her time come, came, whoa, you're talking about a chick. That even had the animals fasting. Forget people. But the people believed in her so much. We're not even feeding the animals. Man. She had impact. She had impact. She was rebranding. The enemy thought he was destroying the Jewish people. God's chosen people. And she's like, nah, nah, nah. Well, I'm not only going to save them, I'm going to get them rebranded and blessed because that's what happened at the end. If you read the book of Esther. You know, but, but we miss it, man. Let's keep going here. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he returned and with a loud voice glorified God. Check this out. There's 10 of them. They're in the process. They get cleansed. That's one out of 10, right? 10%. Not a high percentage, is it? He turned around and went back to God. He turned around and went back to God. And then he fell down on his face at Jesus, his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Back in the day, the Samaritans were half-breeds. They were enemies of God. Jewish people did not let them do anything, man. And what does Jesus say? So Jesus answered and said, where's the other ten? Where are the other nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner, this Samaritan? And he said to the Samaritan, Arise and go your way, for your faith has made you well, man. 
See, when we got a religious spirit, when we got hidden agendas and ulterior motives in our heart, when we just don't want to fight that good fight of faith, man, we're going to get stuck with the priest, man. We're going to get stuck playing church, but there will be no impact and no transformation of others because the brand is the kingdom of heaven invading the earth through you. That's the brand, man. That's the brand. See, man gets it twisted. Man gets it twisted, man. You know, whatever you set your affections on, you're in pursuit of, right? Yeah. Yes. You know, we chase money. We chase a nice car. We chase husbands and wives. We chase, you know, education for our children, grandchildren. We chase all of this stuff instead of chasing the one thing that will make all that stuff come. And that's the love of God, man. You cannot impact others if you don't know the love of God, man. You cannot cause a transformation because you can only give away what you got. I got six bucks. I can't say, Pastor Margaret, here's ten. I don't got ten bucks. I can only give away what I got. That's man. right. Come on. That's sorry, Pastor. Got ten or six bucks in his pocket. Sorry, man. <laughs> but it's true. But I can only give away what I got. If you don't know the love of God, you don't have the love of God, so you can't give it away. So you can't impact others and you can't cause a transformation in others' lives, man. You can say every prayer you want. You could pray, pray, pray. You could even sing the old MC Hammer song, you know. We got to pray. Do it, Louie. Just to make it today. We got to pray. You could do anything you want. But that doesn't mean. You know, I tell you this all the time. The thing about the intimacy movement, the thing about, you know, today's, so-called Christianity is everybody knows the language, but nobody's drinking from the river of life. Nobody's drinking. We just play in the water and hold our breath because drinking, ooh, when you drink, man, you remember how you used to get when you drank, man. You get bubbly on the Holy Ghost, man. Woo, yeah. woo. I'm telling you, you get full of joy. You get to dancing. You get to saying stuff out of pocket. You get to act in a certain way. But we don't drink. Because I'm a pillar in the church. And I've been saved 31 years. And I've been, you know, I don't care what that crazy Steve says. I am not doing that. Because it interferes with my kingdom. Jesus told me this like a year ago. Some of you know. He said that I could come down from heaven myself and tell these people to change this, this, and that. And he said in a week they'd be back to doing what they were doing. That's what he said. What a sad statement, man. I promise you some of you will never get a full-time job because you don't want one. I promise you, some of you will never stop robbing God because you don't want to. I promise you, some of you will never stop being angry in here and rebellious because you don't want to. You want to just keep on walking with the other nine to church. Be the church. The church in the Greek is a word called ecclesia. And what that means is that we are the sent ones with the government and authority of heaven. We're the sent ones, man. We're the sent ones. We're the sent ones, man.
You're created for revival. You're created to manifest the truth, man, of who God is and what grace looks like flowing through a man or woman, man. That's why you're here, man. So I was bored about my kids. Your kids are secondary. And until they're secondary, you will suffer, man. But what about my job? Your job is secondary. Your finances are secondary. Your whatever. It's all secondary. And until, God, I, I can't understand what that nut's saying. But the Bible says in Romans 4, 17, to speak those things that are not as though they already were. So I thank you that my financial situation is not my Lord anymore. I thank you that my grandchildren are not my king anymore. I thank you, Lord, that, you know, whatever. Pornography is not my Lord, you know, addictions, whatever it is, man. But And you might just believe it this much when you first say it. But as you keep thanking them for it, man, that starts to grow. The Holy Spirit starts to water it. Lord, he'll send Alex to water it. Man, I'm just feeling that God's about to do something in your life and what you're battling with, you're not going to keep battling with anymore. That's water. That's water. We got to drink the water. But we're so used to religion, we're not able to be like Jesus. What did Jesus preach? The kingdom. The kingdom of heaven invading earth. He modeled it, but it could only happen through a yielded, yielded vessel, man. Yielded. Jesus was yielded. He said, man, I only do what I see him do. I only say what I hear him say and tell me to say. But we want to be seen and heard because of insecure places, man. Yeah. We want to, you know, act like we know something. Let me tell you something. Power. The kingdom is demonstrations of power. It's not just healings raised in the dead. It's a transformed life, man. That's the real power. That's the difference between living from the place of gifting and the place of intimacy, man. We all got gifts, man. Man, I'm from the south side of Chicago. I've been a hustler, a liar, a cheat, a stick-up man, a dope dealer, and a con man my whole life. I can talk. I can talk. But if there's no power behind what I say, There's no power. The, de the kingdom is demonstrations of power. Man. Remember what the brand does. It impacts and transforms through power. You're just like Jesus. Did Jesus have power? Yeah. Ooh. Sometimes I pray for you guys. You're all the way in the back of the church. And rows are just getting. That's power. But can you be trusted? You can. You're made for it. He wants you to demonstrate it, man. But we got to rebrand the church so that others can come in on it, man. Because that's his will of body movement in this generation, man. The revival, the reformation, the love revolution that's going to come is going to come through a body of people, man. That's where it's coming from, man. That's where it's coming from. You know... The brand bringing kingdom from heaven, heaven to earth. It's the distinguisher. Not this fast talk. Not by what you do. It's the distinguisher, man. It's the difference maker, man. It's what draws people unto you. You know, people are going to keep coming to you, keep coming to you. If you're looking to reveal the kingdom. See, I never know what he's going to do, so I, I go crazy every day, man. I can tell you some stuff, man. 
I tell you, stuff in the last two days, <laughs> let alone, you know, every day. Because every day is an adventure. Every day is an adventure, man. You got to understand that it's the distinguisher. It determines the value, man. If you keep just talking about Jesus, Jesus, and you're a social media saint, and you post all these scriptures and all of this stuff and do all that stuff. And then you're sitting there doing nothing with actual people in life, man. You know? I mean, why do people post a lot of stuff? Because we want a perception to come across to others because we have hidden agendas and a rebellious heart inside, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Not this crew. You guys look how holy, man, but just in case you know somebody, man. <clears throat> you know, the brand will always <clears throat> be appealing or unappealing to others in accordance to how they relate to it. Yeah. How are the people relating to you? Oh, I'm just saying, give me some food for thought. Give me some food for thought. What is it doing in society, man? What is the church doing in society, man? Really, very little. Very little. We got our moments. You know what's funny to me? The things that are popular in society that the church does are the things that have no anointing on them or very little. They're appealing. I see a lot of people go to these concerts, then what? Christian rap, very entertaining. But then what? Somebody cries there, they do something, and then what? They go to a church where the seed keeps reproducing something else other than the anointing. Because we don't recognize power. Because we're so used to not having it. Whoa. Whoa. You want to know what the main reason that is, the Lord's told me? Because we don't focus on eternity. Yeah. We don't focus on eternity. Oh, my kids, my grandkids, my job, my car, my whatever, my laziness. Oops. My man, my woman. We don't focus on eternity, man. So you got to understand everything you do today affects eternity in a good or bad way, man. Yes. In a positive or negative way, man. Yeah, yeah. It does. Yeah. It does. God has told some of us to do things. We haven't done them. It's the truth. So how are you affecting eternity? Okay. Mm. I'm just saying, man. It says in Matthew 21, 13, he said, my father's house is to be a house of prayer. House of prayer. I mean, well, what we got going on now in a way that seems right to us. Woo. Most Christians don't even pray every day. I'm being honest, man. Because life is... But understand, when we're in disobedient mode, when we're in religious mode, because we're confessing Christians and we're not disciples, we're not disciplined, wholehearted followers. Because of that, the apostolic cannot build on the prophetic word that's been released. So we stay in two dimensions of the anointing instead of the third that only the apostle and prophet can, and that's the breaker. That's what he's been saying. We got everything in this house. Everything in this house, man. We just started. We still don't know what the heck we're doing. But we love him. And he wants more. He just don't want your addictions. He just don't want your 
perversion. He just don't want your laziness. He wants your gift. He wants to anoint your gift of leadership. He wants to anoint your gift of music. He wants to anoint your gift of wisdom. He wants to anoint it, but the, it cannot be built unless we rebrand the church. And it starts with us rebranding ourselves. Yeah. Everything in Wildfires Ablaze is yours. Everything, man. Everything. Everything. Because I talk to every single person in here consistently. I'm a text messenger. I do. And if I'm not talking to you, you're in trouble. No, I'm being honest. This probably ain't the place for you, man. Because I quit caring and I'm in a stronghold of my design and, you know, <laughs> I'm acting a fool, man. I need Lefty to talk some sense into me or Louie or somebody to do it, man, you know? See, we got to see through the eyes of eternity. You know, when I make choices in my life, I only got two things I'm making sure I'm following. The first one is, am I in God's will? And am I in love? So I can be a vessel that the kingdom of heaven could flow through. Those are the only two gauges I got, man. They were the only two gauges I got. But we got to get back to making God's house a house of prayer. Prayer must be the foundation in your life, man. It's got to. Man, I don't feel like, I'm, I'm just telling you, I'm trying to get you blessed. I'm trying to get you blessed consistently and constantly. Not just once in a while. Even a broke clock is right twice a day. He's good. He's going to throw a dog a bone, man. Yeah. You know, I gave Darlene this scripture the other day. I think it was uh, Isaiah 56, 10. It said that the watchmen, the prayer intercessors, are like sleeping dogs. They no longer bark Come on. to protect the people. Come on. Man, you balked at everything when you were in the world, didn't you? That's right. You balked, you know? You balked at everything. Somebody didn't act right. Somebody didn't do you right, man. See, we got to understand, man. We got to quit doubting. We got to quit doubting, man. We got to quit doubting. We got to understand that he says in Matthew 16, 24, if you would come after me, you must deny yourself. The devil ain't your problem. You are. Yeah. Because you got to manipulate everyone because you're lazy, because you're self-centered. But you won't go into the secret place of prayer to deal with these issues of your heart. So you stay that way and you reproduce it. Yeah. A seed is always reproducing, man. Go get a new job. I promise you'll be with a, you like to party, you'll be with every partier in that place. I promise you. You like to gossip? Go ahead, find one. You'll go there. You'll have every gossiper there, man. Like to tell dirty jokes, you guys will be back and forth, man. You know? I'm telling you. Like attracts like. The enemy's always reproducing, man. He's got a plan even when you don't feel like praying. He's reproducing. Even when you don't feel like doing this or that. Even when you don't want to. The enemy's reproducing. I promise you. He's reproducing. God commanded us in Genesis 1, 10, 1 28. He says... Be, have dominion over all the earth. Dominion means there's going to be a fight. He says, be fruitful and multiply. What are we to multiply? His image and likeness. So what is the enemy reproducing in his seed? His image and likeness. And the main people reproducing is the church. Because the world don't know about any of this stuff. It's the church. Genesis 1.11. It's the church, man. 
Because we don't see right, man. We don't see ourselves as loved. We don't think from the perspective of eternity, man. We're looking through the wrong glasses, man. We're looking through the wrong glasses. I used to have a buddy, man, when I was growing up, and he had these thick Coke bottle glasses, man. And I knew he was blind without them. And he always broke them. He always he only had one arm on them. He would take the other arm. They don't have all this good stuff they got now. And I knew he couldn't see, so I would take his glasses. I mean, I wasn't a good kid, you know what I mean? But I would, I would, I would take his glasses, man. So he couldn't see. You know, we're like those dogs. We can't see because we're sleeping. Nope, I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. Oh, I'm waiting for the right job. You ain't got no money now. If you can be trusted with the little, then he'll give you the right job. Amen. I'm, I'm waiting, you know, where my husband gets right, and then I'm going to get on fire for God. Well, you're going to be waiting a long time. I'm waiting for you to answer that prayers for my children and grandchildren. I'm, oh, my God. We sound like Moses, Lord. And Moses to, 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 to talk like this. I used to have a cousin that, man, when I would party with him, he'd start stuttering. I'd smack him in the head. Spit it out. You know, we get frustrated sometimes, man. Moses got frustrated because God told him to do his will. And he said, God, I can't t -t 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 talk. I stood stutter. Moses, Moses, I'm on the run. I killed somebody. I've been hiding out here all this time. Oh, I got a wife and kids. What did God do to them wife and kids? Read the Bible, he'll tell you. God's will comes before your wife and kids, man. It does. But we're so used, we're so familiar with a God we barely even know. We don't believe that. Whoa. Whoa. Then God gave him a new wife. And the prophet is start talking crazy. They're like, hey, Moses. And God said, this is my man. I'm backing him. Give her leprosy and kick her out the camp. And she would have stayed out there if Moses didn't go in her and intercede on her behalf. You know, we're too familiar with the God because our only revelation of God is mercy because we don't spend time with him. That's how come we don't have the fear of the Lord within us, man. Ooh. So we can't rebrand, man. You've got to train yourself to think when I'm this way that I'm talking about, man. You've got to train yourself, man. You've got to understand what you believe and speak cannot be governed by what you see. Yes. What you believe and speak cannot be governed by what you see. If it is, you're just like the world. You need to start praying for faith. You need to start positioning yourself around some nuts. You need to start making some phone calls and start hollering at somebody that can help you. If not, you'll show up at church You'll go to the priest like the nine lepers. Wow. You'll see his goodness a little bit because he healed them. But you'll never be face to face with God. Religion will not let you be face to face with God like the one. And notice, the first thing he did is he thanked God because he could see clear, man. Because yeah. he was appreciative, man. And he just didn't say, God, thanks. He got out his face. He got out his face. And Jesus' feet to thank God. We need to build. We need to rebrand the church, guys. We need to. You got to understand. Man, I, I'm going to preach the next part. Of, I'm not going to rush this, man. I'm going to preach the next part of this next Sunday. This 
prophetic epistolic message, man, but about what the process is that he wants to do within us so we can bring the kingdom and impact people's life and cause transformations for others, man. So we can really be his hands and feet. So we can really be his mouthpiece. So we can really be transformed ourselves and live in that place of peace and joy when all hell's coming at us, man. Yeah. I mean, I live in that place a little bit, man. Got my moments where I fall. But more, man, 95% of the time, all hell coming at me, I'm cool. Because I've seen him. I've been with him, man. Jesus had all hell breaking loose against him. He was all good. He was all good. Are you all good? Are you all good? You know, you are loved, man. You are accepted the way you are. You are on planet Earth for purpose and destiny. Let's start rebranding ourselves so that the church can get rebranded in the eyes of the lost, man. Where people won't run from the church. Where people won't say we're hypocrites. Where people won't say they're just after your money. Where people won't say that stuff, but people see the value. Because that's one of the words the Lord showed me. He says, people are going to see it pays to serve me. Not just in the spirit, but in the natural. He told me that's what's coming in this next 18 months, man. That's what he told me that, man. Oh, we love you, Lord. We worship you. Anyone online, if you want to give to this ministry, we're good ground. You will get a return on it. You will get a return on it. If you have a home church, do not give your tithe to this ministry. You can give us an offering, and you will get a return. There's two ways we give, cash app, or we give on the website. They're right there on the screen, man. Oh, Father, I ask that you bless these offerings that are coming in right now. Oh, we love you, Lord. We worship you, and we bless you. I ask that you would just blow their minds this week. With the spirit of the increase, let it fall fresh on them. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed weekend, guys.